All right, in this video, I'm going to take a look at a couple of uh, example problems out of the textbook and use the idea of instant center to solve the problems. What we have is a slider crank. It's a little bit different slider crank and the, the line of sliding is offset from this pivot joint, which makes the geometry a little bit more interesting. Uh, bottom line is, I think we know the angular velocity of link AB and we're going to want to find the speed that this block is sliding and the angular velocity of this connecting link. Going to the problem statement, we will see crank AB rotates at a constant angular velocity of 5 radians per second. Determine the velocity of link of block C and the angular velocity of that link at the point where theta equals 30, de 30 degrees. Now, the author <coughs> solves this problem using what he calls the absolute method. And what you do with the absolute method is you, the variable that you want to solve for, you define a position vector for that variable and write an equation that's always true and then take derivatives of that equation to learn derivatives of x and since x is the location of c the derivative of x with respect to time would be the velocity of c and the second derivative of x with respect to time would be the acceleration of point c if we can write one or more such equations and so um, sometimes it's easy to write the equation sometimes it's not sometimes it's easy to do the derivative sometimes it's not uh, and sometimes you just have to have pretty good insight to find equations that work. So I jokingly call that one the DADB method. Think around and do your best method. And uh, so uh, think around means find the equation and do your best after that. Let's look at that solution very quickly. Then we're going to look at an instant center solution for this one. One of the things that we can say that is true, since we know the length of this link, and we know the length of this link, is x is composed as the horizontal distance, or leg of this triangle, plus the horizontal leg of that triangle. And so we're going to be able to say that this x is equal to 0.6 times the cosine of theta, plus 0.3 times the cosine of phi. And so that is our first equation as given by the author. Unfortunately, we would wish maybe that x was only a function of theta, but it's also a function of that angle phi, and so we're going to have to write something else that's true. And what is true is that the total height from this pin to ground level is this r times the sine of theta. And it's also true that this very same height is the leg, uh, the vertical leg of this triangle right here plus this extra length of 0.15 meters. Okay, so let me just zoom in on that for a moment so you can maybe see that a little bit better. That looks like the best that I can zoom in. So from pin to ground, I can write from the left hand triangle. From pin to ground, I can write from the right hand triangle, this vertical leg based on this angle phi measured over here, okay, plus this constant distance of 0.15, which is the offset to the sliding. So I can say that 0.6 sine of theta, that's the whole distance, can also be found on the other side by 0.3 sine of phi, that's the triangle leg, plus the constant of 0.15. Now, there's several ways we could take these two equations which are true and learn things. And to learn velocity stuff, we're going to have to take derivatives with respect to time. So we could take derivatives of this equation with respect to time, and take derivatives of this equation with respect to time, and somehow put those two things together and hope that we come up with an answer. The other thing we could do instead is algebraically eliminate phi from the equation set by doing something like solving this equation for phi, isolate it, take it over here and plug it in here and then see what we have left. Or uh, and maybe we end up using some trig identities. I don't know exactly what process the author used to eliminate phi from this equation set, but here's the result. That that x equation where phi has been eliminated by doing a, a solve and substitute here is given right here and it's the 0.6 cosine of theta plus this square root term. Okay. 
Now what we have is x is a function of theta. Let's presume that we're controlling angle theta. We're choosing its value of theta. We're also choosing its derivative. So since we're controlling theta and we have x as a function of theta, we can take what I call the funny derivatives back in the uh, cylindrical coordinate section. So using chain rule and product rule, we're going to take the derivative of x with respect to time and to do that, each piece, we may take the derivative of x with respect to theta and then have to multiply by d theta dt. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. So that the derivative of 0.6 cosine of theta with respect to time is minus 0.6 sine of theta. That would be the derivative of this thing with respect to theta. But then out here we're multiplying by d theta dt. So proceed along and solve for all of the things we want to solve for. I'll let you look at the rest of that solution, but that's using the author's method called the absolute method. Another method is to use the idea of instant centers. And so the instant centers that we will need to care about will be the instant center of body AB, but that's easy. That's right there. We'll also need the instant center of body BC. That's the harder one. The instant center of body containing the block C is, as we said, down at infinity and on a line at infinity passing through point C and perpendicular to the sliding direction. But where's that middle one? Where's the instant center of body BC? As I said, we take this line and we extend it straight out and we take this line right here because the velocity of C is that way. We'll extend this line perpendicular to the velocity and that is the instant center of body BC. So let's call that IC of this body BC. Now, <clears throat> to solve for the velocity of body C, we're actually going to have to do some trig and learn some distances and then use V equal R omega over and over again. And maybe the hardest part is the trig. Conceptually, finding the instant center is simple since I just drew it. If I drew this perfectly to scale, I could actually measure the distances and the answer would be good enough. But let's reason out some of these kind of things. If this is angle theta, which is 30 degrees, then this angle right here, where I put that dot, is also 30 degrees because this line just continues on. Um, for this triangle, right here because this is 0.15 that means this distance has to be 0.15 and if this distance is 0.15 that's half of 300 which says that this angle right now is also 30 degrees if that angle is 30 degrees then this angle right here has to be double that. That has to be 60. That's not double. It has to be uh, 90 minus 30 degrees. That has to be 60, which makes that angle right there 30 degrees. So I've got 30 degrees here. If this is 30 degrees, then this angle um, has to be 60 degrees. I'm going to put two dots there, meaning two 30s. This angle is 60. The combination of these two angles is 60. Therefore, this angle must be 60 degrees. I've got a 60-60-60 triangle, which is an equilateral triangle. Therefore, every leg of the triangle must be the same as that leg, which means that distance is 300 and that distance is 300. Okay? I could have, and so I've sort of reasoned out that that's 300 and that's 300. Uh, we could have crunched it with numbers instead. I reasoned it out. Now, if we know that body AB has an omega of 5, then the velocity of point B must be an R of 600 times an omega of 5 is equal to 3,000 millimeters per second. So V equal R omega and I was given the R and I was given the omega. I now have the velocity of point B 
which is perpendicular to that link and perpendicular to that line and I got it from the point of view of link AB. Now I'm going to write the velocity of B which is known is equal to an R omega but the VB is 3000. This R, because I've transitioned to another new body, this R is 300. Therefore, one equation, one unknown, omega of body BC, omega of the body containing BC, is equal to 3000 divided by 300. It's equal to 10. And because of this one rotating this direction, this body would be rotating that direction. And I know omega BC is 10. Now that I know the omega of body BC, I can say V, oops, V equals R omega again, which V, the velocity of point C, and I don't know it. Which omega, the omega of body BC, that I just solved for, that's a 10. And what R? The R that goes from the instant center of body BC down to point C, and that's a 300. Therefore, the velocity of point C is 10 times 300 is equal to 3,000 millimeters per second, or 3 meters per second. Now, what did the author get? If we scan down the author's solution, after a whole lot of math, we see that he got that VC is 3 meters per second. Now he said minus. I didn't pay too much attention to the sign, but clearly if this omega, you can't see it, if this omega is in this direction, then this velocity of point C has to be to the left and the author called that minus. All right, so the author, after he found the velocity of C, then went on through a lot more math to find the omega of body BC, and he got a 10. Compare the math to the instant center method, and you decide. You're welcome on a test to use any method you like. I'm not going to insist on instant center method or the absolute method or the vector method until we get to accelerations and then uh, you're probably going to want to use the vector method. So this problem with instant centers is done. Let's find my next problem. And this is the second time I've worked in these problems. Let's see, where did it go? It is right here. And we have a disk. If you look at the author's solution to the problem, you see that for this problem, the author is using a vector method which involves actually doing cross products. That'll be the next video that I make, will be, which will be the vector method for solving these problems. But let's take a look at a solution to this problem using purely instant centers. And so let me zoom in on this a bit. Okay, and so we have this wheel rolling on ground without slipping. We have a, attached to the wheel is a smaller diameter section. Wrapped around that smaller diameter section is a rope. That rope is coming out and we are applying a force to that rope and we're pulling that into the rope with a velocity V. And the question is, what is the velocity of various points on this body in particular, looking at the problem statement, determine the velocity of point A, which is out on the outer rim. Okay, um, and so we have rope wrapped around center core. This reminds me of a device that many of us played with as, as kids called a yo-yo. We didn't generally drag it around the ground and said we did yo-yo stuff with it. So I call these kind of problems yo-yo problems. And these are the dragging yo-yo problems. And one of the difficulties students sometimes have is for this problem actually deciding 
does this block or does this yo-yo roll to the left or does the yo-yo roll to the right the best way for you to find out is go find your yo-yo and pull it gently and see that this yo-yo in fact would roll to the right and one quick exp explanation is the only force acting on this body external besides what's happening right here at what is obviously the instant center is a force to the right. If we have that as the instant center, a point with zero, and our force is to the right, then that body is going to roll to the right. All right. And what it's going to do is as we pull on it, it's going to wind up some of this cord. That cord will get shorter and shorter until the yo-yo gets our fingers. All right. So if we know this velocity, what's the velocity of point A? First of all, given that the rope does not slip on the yo-yo, it's that kind of yo-yo, then whatever the velocity, oops, of the end of the rope might be is also the velocity of that point on the rope. And it's the velocity of that point on the rope because that rope doesn't stretch. So it's also the velocity of that point on the rope, right where it comes off the, the real tangent. And since there's no slip, the velocity of the rope is also the velocity of the yo-yo at that point. So everything along this line has that velocity V, which we were, were we given a number for it? No, we're just gonna work this one symbolically. So we know V. And we, because we recognize no slip, we know the instant center of the wheel right now is here. Of course, as the wheel travels to the right, this instant center will move along to the right as well. Question then would be, what is the velocity of A? And since we know the instant center, this is gonna be quite easy. Uh, we do have two radiuses marked here. We have a small radius from the center of the wheel to the perimeter of the small wheel. That's, that is an R, a small r. Then we have a big r, which is from the center of the wheel out to the big perimeter of the wheel. And so the distance of this rope from the ground is big R, big R minus little r. Big R minus little r is the distance from the rope to the instant center. So we can say that V that is given is equal to this r right here, which is big R minus little r times omega of the wheel. And if we know the velocity, and if we know the r's, then we can solve for that omega. We know the omega of that wheel now. Or, or we can solve for omega as a function of V and R. And write that as omega is equal to V over big R minus little r. Now that we know that, the question is, what's the velocity of point A? And the velocity of point A is equal to some kind of a generic r omega thing. Well, the omega is the same omega of the wheel, so that's going to be the same omega, which is also that. And the r is going to be the distance from a to the instant center. So we could call that r of a measured relative to or measured from the instant center. And that distance is big R twice. So V sub A is equal to 2 times big R times the omega which we've already solved for as V over big R minus little r. Let's get that on the page. So velocity A is the R from the instant center 2 times big R times the omega that we already saw for V over big R minus little r. And so that would end up then being 2R over R minus R times V for the velocity of A. If we peek over here at the author's solution, he goes through vector cross product methods. It's not too complicated. And we learn that the velocity of A is 2 times R times V over big R minus little r. Okay, we learned the same thing. We better get the right answer. Uh, we just did it, since we're only doing velocities, with a slightly simpler method. Um, eventually, if we wanted to say something about accelerations, 
we would have to go to the vector method. We would not be able to keep using instant centers because instant centers doesn't do accelerations. Uh, that would end the examples for instant centers.